Okay, and we're back, and in this particular video, we're gonna focus on doing a linear regression with a categorical variable. And we're gonna first just kinda of create a categorical variable. I'm gonna create an income for variable uh, for our use. So um, I've got an old command that I'm gonna replace. So we're gonna tell it that uh, income for, and we might have to create a variable here, but we'll say income for equals the household income greater than we'll just you know you might have a, a quartile approach or something that you may use but I'm just going to use this approach here I'm going to just say income four with the highest category being four if they make over seventy five thousand dollars all right and then next we'll do income four is if it's uh, you know less than or equal to um, seventy five thousand dollars or not less than or equal to just less than because they have to be exclusive. That will become three. And then if the income is less than, uh, we'll say, uh, we'll cut this down to $55,000. We'll call that two. And if it's less than, we'll call this uh, $35,000. We'll call that category one. Can do a summary on these summary uh, income for how's it look we got one two three and four and then one that was a uh, non applicable we could uh, you know potentially do like a, a life expectancy box plot box plot by um, or life expectancy 2017 by our new income for variable just to see how it looks and kind of looks okay there all right now um, let's do our linear regression now um, we want to do a linear regression where it was uh, what was it we have to kind of we'll just call it model we can call it whatever we want model 4 is equal to kind of not equal to but arrow to right linear model LM and then what are we trying to predict here well we'll try to predict life expectancy 2017 and then we have to put the squiggly line and we could have a continuous factor if we want so say we want it to uh, um, add a continuous factor I don't know which one to pick but uh, earlier we had that food environment index um, we don't, we've already got income. We're going to use income as a categorical. We got smokers, right? That was a good one to use. Smokers. So that's continuous. And then we also are going to want to use this uh, income factor. Now, if I try to use this income factor the way it is right now, income four, it's going to treat that as a continuous variable. And I can do my summary on model four here, but it's somewhat flawed in that it is treating income four as a cat or as a continuous variable when there should be categories there. And there's not. So how are we going to rectify that? So you might say, well, we need to just tell it in our formula to make income a categorical variable, right? That should work but it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. We have to tell it to make this a, um, a matrix, I guess. So how do we do that? How do we make a matrix variable? And the way we do that is we can call it like a income four dot F. Um, it tells us like a factor level variable. And then that will equal factor parentheses income four. So our existing categorical variable or factor level variable becomes this new one. So we're telling it to make this a factor level variable. So punch that in there. Now I go back to my model, but instead of using the squiggly line, I can do the plus line and instead of income four which is a continuous variable I can tell it to use 
income 4.f. And that is a factor level variable where the one is going to be the reference group compared to everything else. So it just did something. I hit enter on there. So when I do summary on my new model four, what do we get? So there you see it. Factor level two, factor level three, factor level four. So these are all being compared against factor level one. So this is a way of looking at it categorically speaking. So everything is here. So overall, our model has a 54% R square. And, you know, earlier, remember we looked at income that was a continuous variable and it was, you know, not necessarily easy to read. It had, you know, 0.0006 or something. Well, here as a factor level variable, you may have straightened out some of it too. We can see that the level two has 0.94 more years of life expectancy than group one. Group one, again, if you looked at our formula when we made these, group one are those that make less than 35,000. So those that make less than 55,000, but more than 35,000, those folks had almost a year of life expectancy more. But then when you start getting up into that higher range, you know, they had 2.29 years more of life expectancy. And then when you get up into this even higher range, the people that make 75,000 or more had three more years of life that they would live compared to the people in group one. And as you make more factor levels or more extremes, I think with life expectancy in the United States, you'll continue to see that uh, departure. And then smoking is still treated here as a continuous variable. So um, we've got our adjusted R square there. Um, you could actually kind of compare them. Instead of using the income four, you can actually use the, um, what were we basing that off of? It was the household income as a continuous factor. So summary, and this is a model four still. I just rewrote it. So 55% adjusted R square versus 54%. So, you know, this model here is slightly better, but um, how does that model kind of work with some of the other diagnostic factors that we should take into consideration when determining whether or not our model meets some of the other assumptions that go with linear regression modeling? So, that's just an example of how to use a categorical variable um, or a factor level variable and a linear regression analysis. So I will uh, stop there. And that's not too different than what, what might go on with an ANOVA, an analysis of variance, which is also just a type of general, general linear model. So we'll stop there and um, you know, we'll then go into diagnostics of whether or not our model is meeting a lot of assumptions or departing a lot from them. So that'll be the next video.